Okay, now some of you in the room, many of you in the room, were here earlier for a case discussion relating to an article that Mr. Steyer wrote back in the early 1990s for the Harvard Business Review about his, for the time, quite revolutionary business uh, management practices. And some of you who were not participants in that discussion might want to know a little bit more about that. And I just wonder if, Mr. Steyer, if you could just uh, tell us what were some of those critical changes, just the two or three core changes that you made during that period. And take us back to that decisional moment when you knew, despite the company succeeding on most measures, that something had to change. But I was going crazy because I was working so hard and I had to be everywhere. Because if I wasn't here, then that would be screwed up. If I wasn't there, that'd be screwed up. People were coming to me all the time. And with uh, handing me problems, handing me problems, handing me problems. And so I started looking for a way to get those people to start doing a better job. My problem was, my problem was that those people didn't care. Those people didn't, didn't really care about the business. They didn't, they made mistakes. I mean, there's, it's in the case too. So the biggest change was in learning how, looking back on it, learning three things. Learning how to create productive problems, to restate problems in a productive manner. Look, this whole talk today is going to about be doing about is going to be about doing that. Learning how to rewrite the problem in a different way that helps you create a more productive solution. Asking questions, asking more powerful, more learning how to ask better and better questions. I always I call it. Exercising your question asking muscle. Okay? And there's a skill that can be learned and honed and developed, learning how to ask better questions. And the third one is ownership. And who do I want to own what? So that's sitting back now talking about it, but those are the three things I worked on. And so let's talk about where we were back then. I think people know, I took, some of you have already read the case, some didn't, but I, I used to taste the sausage every day to make sure that the sausage was good. And one day I said, when I was thinking about it, why is this my problem? I have no idea. I'm sitting in the office. By this time, I'm sitting in the office. People out there in the plants are making the sausage. Why don't they taste the sausage? So I went, because they're the ones making it. They should be tasting it to see if it's any good. How, why should I be owning that problem? I can't do that. I don't have the information. I'm not the guy. They should be the experts. Who should be the expert? Who should be in charge? They should be in charge. So I went down to see them, and I said, you guys ought to be tasting the sausage. And the response is, would, would really chill you. Is they said, well, how will we know if it's any good? Those are the people who were making the sausage. So... Fortunately, making sausage, you know, sausage is not that complicated. It's not rocket science. There's a few things that you do. You know, is it juicy? Does it, does the smoke color right? Is it tasty? Is it, uh, um, does it have the right, it does it not have something in it that shouldn't be in it, you know? A few key things is, it, is the casing tender. And it, so we gave them a chart and they started tracking it. And the sausage got better. Now, you, everyone's well, sure, because they eliminated all the problems. Well, yes, but not exactly, because a lot of times there were, prob there were changes in the process and the sausage actually tasted better. And when they were studying it like that, they were able to capture those serendipitous changes and build them into the system. And that made the sausage better always. And... That's the bottom line for any business. It's not just about sausage. It's, not just, it's how do I engage my people so that I get them to want to create the best, do the best, do the stuff, whatever. It's not how do I control them. That was my problem. My problem. How do I control my people? How do I clone myself so I can be everywhere? How do I do that? I restated the problem. And the problem was, what do I need to do differently? I created this. 
I'm the problem. What do I as a person need to do differently? So those people, those obviously great people, will want to become really great at what they do. I ask them, why do they think that? What's their basis? What do they think? Where did they come up with that? I, if you're going to do this, and I'm not saying that every person is comfortable running a business the way I run it, or leading the business the way I lead it. You have to really believe that the other people have, are smart and have ideas that you haven't had. And that the real, the real purpose of this is to glean their input. So when they ask questions, or they have ideas or decisions that, that are something I would do, you just have to ask why. What made you think that? You know, why did you do that? You know, why do you think that way? What's causing that? How do you think that's going to work out? That's just great, productive comp. Help me understand. Fellow, I, yeah, I worked as a consultant for years, and one fellow I thought was just brilliant because he kept saying, help me understand. And I learned that trick from him. Help me understand what's going on here, what you're thinking of. So that's it's basically a bunch of questions. Well, you still have to produce business results, right? You got to make the product, you got to sell it, you got to do those things, you got to get the cost down. Uh, so those numbers are, those metrics, they have those metrics, okay? As a company, we have what we have. We have the overall goal, the overall uh, mission. Then we have must do, can't fails. We have like six must do, can't fails as a company. All right? These are the things we have to get done. This year, and we have some that even go on that are part of the strategy may go on longer than that, but there's, every year there's like five or six of them. From that, all the various teams say, here's how we can contribute at every level. It goes down and cascades, here's how we can contribute, here's how we can contribute, here's how we can contribute. And then every individual says, they build their PDC, their personal development commitment based on, here's what I'm gonna learn from the contribution I'm gonna make, and here are the key things, the key strategic things I'm gonna be working on over the next period of time to, to help advance the ball. They might do 5,000 other things that don't fit in that, and that's great, they should be doing those, but these are the key ones to help people keep focused on, on those. So, if the team has got their job done, if they produce their results, if the people have learned and, grow, have, have learned and grown at the, at the end of the year, and, and we do a tremendous amount of assessment on how well they're learning and how, how well they're growing, it goes on more than yearly. Uh, at least quarterly, we sit down with people and have coaching sessions, et cetera, and look through that. And if, and if they're progressing, then they've done what they've, then they've done what they're supposed to do.